Hey gang, this is Spiffy Guy, and uh, we're back for another uh, Bush class, uh, USA class. And uh, this intermediate class is make a ditty bag or a stuff sack. You're going to hand sew it. So I need a stuff sack for my Moore's Bush Pot. So we're going to get going. Uh, some of the things you need, you're going to need some fabric, and um, you're going to need a flexible tape, uh, measuring tape, a uh, ruler, and something to mark your fabric, some scissors, and some thread. I'm using this wonderful yellow thread to contrast with the black ripstop nylon I picked up at Joann's. That way you guys will be able to see it. So let's get measuring. All right, so we're gonna measure our pot here. Um, some things to uh, keep in mind is this particular pot right here has this large um, bale section right here. So we need to make sure that our stuff sack's gonna be wide enough that it will um, it will uh, not have a problem going in and we also want to make sure that uh, it's loose enough so it's easy to get the stuff sack in there. Um, I'm going to make a round bottom stuff sack as opposed to one that would just come together and be flat. That way uh, this pot will fit in there a little bit easier. So uh, essentially you just want to make sure that you're, uh, you're measuring around the widest part of the pot and uh, we'll add our seam allowances later. Uh, seam allowance is going to be a um, basically what you're creating your seams with so a little extra fabric I chose to do uh, 21 inches on this just to give it a nice good opening like I said it's a stuff sack so it'll cinch up at the top uh, this lid right here does point up a little bit so make sure when you measure top to bottom that any protrusions if you plan to uh, store alcohol uh, bottles or anything on top of the the, uh, the pot that you account for that as well. So now we got to transfer our uh, measurements to the fabric. All right, so we're going to transfer our measurements to our fabric. Um, I, I've got a little fabric pencil and some ripstop nylon here. Um, and you can see that uh, basically I've measured out my uh, the size that I need and I've added a half an inch all the way around the perimeter. And that's going to be my seam allowance because this is gonna to come together like a, a tube and we're gonna have one seam on the tube and then we'll have a seam on the bottom that will uh, attach to our circular bottom here. And as you can see, I've got the inside diameter. That is the diameter that I want my, my bag to be and this outside diameter is my, uh, my seam allowance. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these out and we'll get sewing. All right, so we've got our two pieces cut out. We have our, uh, our bottom and our side piece. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want to uh, connect this seam. We'll sew this seam up, and then we'll sew the bottom on there, fold the uh, top over, and that'll be our drawstring channel. So I'll show you some of the uh, seams that we're gonna use on uh, these. Um, so let's move on to pinning. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, uh, fold this over. So we're gonna bring the edges right up next to each other leaving just a small gap on the bottom. We'll take that small gap on the bottom and hopefully you can see this black on black doesn't really work. We'll fold that over, okay? So it lines up and then we're gonna fold it over one more time because we want that raw edge that we just folded over to be underneath. And so you can kind of mess with this and get it as tight as possible and then pin it up. And that way we're gonna end up with a very, very secure seam here on the inside of our uh, stuff sack and it won't come undone. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you this, the stitching that we're using. Um, these stitches right here, that's a running stitch. Okay, and essentially you're just weaving in and out through that, making a, a tight stitch. So that's what it's gonna look like on the bottom. Keep in mind that this is a, uh, a fold here. So when we turn this inside out, you know, you really won't see the stitching here. Now the stitch that I'm actually going to use on the whole thing is a back stitch, okay? And essentially you end up with a stitch that looks like this, but on the underside you end up with a stitch that looks like that. And uh, I like the back stitch because it's a, uh, to me it seems like it's a little bit stronger. So what we're doing is we have our 
our, uh, sorry, I did this frame. We're going to kind of come in and uh, go along that line there. And we pull it through, snug it up, and then we're actually going back. So we're going to go back again. It's kind of hard to do to see what you're doing in the camera. But You see, and then like I said on the underside, you're going to end up with this line. So just keep in mind if you're using a back stitch on something, you want to make sure that this stitching part is going to be hidden. And as I said, in our case, it's going to be on the inside. So we'll continue on back stitching down this whole thing, and then we'll put the bottom on as well. And I'll probably use a back stitch on that too. So there you go. Okay. Now that we've done our back stitch all the way up the side of our stuff sack, we need to make the drawstring loop. So we fold over the edge here and pin along the channel, that loop, the channel that will be for our paracord or whatever cord draw cord you want to do. Which will go down in here. Keep in mind that this will be on the inside because we will be flipping it over. And so what I do is I go through and make a loop. Oops, make a loop and then pull it through. This is sort of a blanket stitch. Okay, and what that'll do is that'll lock it in place and it will um, help relieve any stress that may come from opening and closing. And you can add a few more when you're done there. And so what I'll do on this seam is I'll just do a simple running stitch. And what that is, is essentially it's just sort of an in and out. Just kind of go in, very shallow, kind of lock it up there. You keep the uh, stitches as shallow as you can. And then once you get three or four, however many, you can pull through and pull through tight. And it'll look like that. Now this is the inside, and that's what it's going to look like on the outside. And so we're just going to do the running stitch all the way around there, and then we'll attach the bottom. One thing I wanted to point out right here is uh, this is ripstop nylon, and it will fray. So rather than actually fold this seam over on my uh, closure channel, I just took a lighter and very, very, very lightly. You got to be careful, otherwise you'll melt it all up. But singe the edge along here, and that'll keep it from fraying once it's uh, on the inside of the bag. Um, if you're using something like duck cloth or some other fabric that has fibers and will fray, you'll need to uh, make sure that you tuck that edge underneath before you sew it up otherwise your uh, your channel will fray out and your stitches will come loose and uh, your bag will come apart which i've actually had happen with on a commercial bag for my uh for my coleman cook kit and i actually had to repair it myself because they didn't uh they didn't fix the seams so just something to point out there and uh, i'm just about done sewing i had to switch lines so I just tied it off there and I'll add a new line and uh, finish the loop or the uh, channel and uh, do the bottom. So on the bottom here what we're doing is uh, we're just going to take that the bottom piece and fold it over sandwiching the uh, side piece between two sections of the bottom and then we'll uh, pin it up and then what we'll do is we'll back stitch through both layers, similar to what we just did, catching this side piece, and, uh, and we'll have our bottom. So we just need to go ahead and sew that up, put our drawstring in, and flip it over. Okay, so this is the final outcome of our uh, our little uh, stuff sack, and uh, I fold it on the inside. See our seams on the inside. 
this is the only seam on the bottom where I did uh, the original seam and then I actually folded it up and did an extra seam in there just to reinforce so let's see what the stuff sack looks like with the pot in so this is what the pot looks like inside the stuff sack I probably could have made the uh, the top come up a little bit further but I wanted uh, this lid doesn't fit uh, super secure so it would rattle so by doing it this way where it's a little bit further down on the lid it holds the lid on tight to the pot and so it doesn't rattle the only thing that does rattle is this little piece and all I gotta do with that is uh, I just take the uh, the tail of our cinch cord and I just wrap it in there a couple times and uh, get it nice and tight and then uh, it doesn't rattle at all so that is the uh, stuff sack for the uh, Morris pot made out of material uh, good material a second requirement for the uh, intermediate bush class on making a stuff sack was to make an improvised one and what I have before me is a piece of a pant leg and some paracord and I took the guts out of the paracord and we're going to use that to sew up this pant leg and make it into a um, stuff sack. Uh, the seams won't be as clean as the uh, other material but that's why it's improvised and uh, to do that we're going to sew it up with our repair needle which is a uh, sail needle right here on the more knife and this is what it looks like and sail needles have the uh, triangular shape now I picked these up on eBay this is what the package looks like and these are number 14 these are kind of big as you can see and uh, but it was five bucks for 25 of these so you could probably made me buy a slightly smaller one but uh, that's what we're going to use to uh, sew it up so we're just folding the ends together kind of doing a running stitch nothing fancy at all and this paracord is uh these ends kind of bunch up a little bit but if you're careful and then uh once it's all put together we'll uh run a couple blanket stitches through there to lock it up and uh, make sure that it won't come undone pretty pretty simple stuff so i did a running stitch all the, through the whole bottom cinched it all together and now I'm doing these lock stitches and all that is is I'm just pulling the thread through and with the loop that it creates bring the thread back through and essentially create a small half hitch and then you just cinch that up and I'll make another little small half hitch just to seal the end and uh, our end of our stuff sack essentially. Okay, and here is the uh, final product of the improvised stuff sack. I could turn it inside out, but then I'd end up with this big ball at the bottom. Doesn't really matter. Uh, simple channel, sail needle, and a paracord. Um, we got it out, the paracord. We still have all the uh, other strands that were left from the paracord that my children have graciously tied into knots. And uh, there's quite a bit of extra paracord here. So, one improvised uh, stuff sack, pant leg paracord, and our sail needle. And that, we'll just stick that back on the knife. And uh, work for the next project. So here's the two stuff sacks that I, uh, I made, ditty bags, whatever you'd like to call them. And uh, that completes the uh, intermediate Bush Class USA class. Be sure to check out uh, the Bushcraft USA forums and the sub forum for Bush Class if you're looking for more information on these classes. They are incredibly useful in uh, honing your skills or developing new ones. And uh, this particular one, sewing, I feel is a very important skill to learn. Not only can you repair gear, but you can also make your own gear for cheaper than. Uh, what you buy in the store and it also allows you to customize gear to meet the needs that you want so it's definitely a good skill to have so thanks for watching and uh, stick around we got more coming up
Knock, knock. Who's there? The interrupting cow. The interrupting cow. Moo! Ha! <laughs>